For every Celtics fan, the 1997 lottery was like getting jilted at the altar. We were supposed to marry the great Tim Duncan. We had 264 ping pong balls, way more than anyone. You know the rest. <laughs> so, Pop, all I've heard right, from, from since I've gotten here was that you're going to trade me. That's all I've heard for the last 20 minutes. Duncan ended up winning two MVPs, three finals MVPs, and four titles. It's still a dream right now. But it's the little things that make him special. Offensively, he can destroy you on the low post. He can run perfect pick and rolls with any decent guard. And when all else fails, he can just bank that pretty 15-footer off the glass. Seriously, does anyone else in basketball have that shot? He protects the rim, crashes the glass, and anchors the defense as well as anybody. His teammates love him. You can see it. Duncan carries himself like a big brother. He probably led the league for 16 straight years just in throwing his arm around a teammate's shoulder. The Spurs have always had the best chemistry, always. And you have to credit Duncan and Popovich for that. The wiring in your brain might accept this. If I just change the name of it, you won't know, and then you'll run it, maybe. Since 1997, you never heard about Duncan dogging it, calling out teammates, showing up heavy for training camp, complaining about money, asking for a trade, giving himself a nickname. Of course, people found that boring. Tim Duncan didn't have cool commercials. Tim Duncan didn't have street cred. Tim Duncan wasn't polarizing. Hey, Tim Duncan, you're boring. That's what people said. I'm sorry, since when was winning boring? Duncan, a three-pointer, puts it up, it's good! Tim Duncan! You realize the Spurs have won 70% of the games Duncan's played, right? 70%. They never missed the playoffs with him or won less than 50 games with him, except for the strike year in 1999, when they went 37 and 13. Oh, and the Spurs came within two plays of possibly winning five straight titles with Duncan. Fisher's crazy game winner in 2004, and Manu's ill-advised foul on Dirk in 2006. You take his greatness for granted because he does it on such a consistent basis, night after night, year after year. And now San Antonio has a chance for its fifth title of the Duncan era. Only one other player won finals MVPs 14 years apart. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's on the table for Duncan right now. Even if it doesn't happen, he's still the greatest player of his generation. Greater than Kobe, greater than Garnett, greater than Shaq, greater than anyone. So yeah, it's safe to say he came back to haunt the Celtics. But even the biggest Boston fan would admit it was pretty cool to watch Tim Duncan from afar. <laughs>